So let's move outside. Let, let's talk Let's talk cornerback uh, position, Brian, because, look, we were both excited when Mike Mickens was brought onto the staff last year, and I think, for me, uh, his pairing back up with Marcus Freeman is even more exciting uh, as far as what Mike Mickens' uh, role on this defense is and, and how – and how he relates to what what is going to happen defensively. We I, I like him as a recruiter. I think I think there's some a, a step that he could take still uh, on the recruiting trail. But I think he's done a pretty darn good job up to this point. Uh, but I'm really interested to see because he's going to have you talk about a ball of clay, right? He's got a bunch of balls of clay that we don't we haven't seen on the field at Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. We've seen him on film. We know what we think they can do. There there there's those ifs again, right? Um, but if that group. It does what we think it can do. It can be a really, really good group. It's going to be a young group, but there's a bunch of talent there, and I think that fits right into the wheelhouse of what Mike Mickens, what Mike Mickens does. I think from a recruiting standpoint, I'm I'm going to disagree with you a little bit, and okay. that's what people want. Like they want us to disagree more. So well, this is a chance go. for us to disagree a little bit. I, for me, I would agree with you if the focus is on recruiting rankings. And, and so, yes, if you're, you know, they didn't land any highly ranked guys in this last year's cornerback class. But if you sign Ryan Barnes and Philip Riley type players every year at Notre Dame, I am thrilled. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And you're going to have outstanding cornerback play. Uh, so, so I loved the class they had. And if they can bring in a class like that every year, um, I'm, I'm an excited guy. Yeah, yeah. You know, I love Joe, Joe Johnson and, and Chance Tucker's, a, I think, a guy that's, like I said before, I think it's going to make me look bad here moving forward. But I love what he did at recruiting, especially when you consider he made zero in-school visits and he had zero official visits to work with. Uh, you know, so I, I think he did an excellent job. But to your point, I think it's ex- I think what's exciting to me is is obviously the the most obvious thing is the Marcus Freeman pairing. Yes, and the fact that these two work not only work together, but these two went to the same high school and they were only a few years apart. Marcus Freeman was just slightly older than Mike Mickens, so there was going to be some some turnover. So these are guys that have a long connection. There's a level of trust there. Marcus Freeman does not take the job at Notre Dame if he doesn't have respect for Mike. You know, I don't want to work with that guy again. Yeah, no, you know what I mean? Yeah, right. like, no way. No, that's definitely a piece of the puzzle. No question. Right. Yeah. And so I think that pairing is good. I think that that allows the defense to make an even faster transition on the back end because you have a coach in the secondary that already knows – Absolutely. The the what the defensive coordinator wants. He doesn't have to learn. Well, what do you want here? What kind of technique do you would you like to use? He already knows right. they can exactly. hit the ground hit the ground running together. And so I think that is really really important. And I think that that I'm also excited to see with Mike Mickens this year. The challenge is, you know, I thought he did such a good job last year when you consider Nick McLeod's limitations as a player to get the kind of production that he got from him. And Nick McLeod was a much better player at Notre Dame than he was at I NC agree. State. I agree. And he was a good player at NC State, but he was a really good player. And and he got that out of a guy that I don't think is necessarily a great t- physical talent. Uh, and, I, and I think that – not that the NFL draft is the end-all, be-all, but I think we're going to see around NFL draft time kind of what teams think of a guy like Nick McLeod. So from a just a physical talent standpoint, but he was a really darn good football player for Notre Dame this year. I agree. You know, you 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 have Tariq Bracey who sort of has that meltdown, and then you get a freshman Cla- Clarence Lewis who nobody thought was going to be, you know, not many people <laughs> thought could play as a freshman at Notre Dame. Well, I, I think of all the, of the freshmen that were on the roster, I don't know that people would have thought Clarence Lewis would be the one to play. Is that fair? I, I did. Okay. I, I well, wrote about that. But most didn't. I think most would have yeah. looked at Ramon Henderson and the yes. speed that he had right. and all that kind of stuff. But no, I, I agree with your point. I, I'm just saying. That was like, great. I was like, wait, what? I, I <laughs> did. Um, just because he's such a smart, heady player, yeah. and we saw yeah. that. And and he even in the games where he struggled, like the Alabama game, he played with confidence. It was you know, and and you have to like that. Part of that is just that's who Clarence Lewis is. But the other part of it is, I think Mike Mickens did a, did a great job. So I think he was really working with a. I mean, a, a, not a full deck. And I think what yeah. I mean by that is not having a spring last year killed the secondary more than any other position. Yeah. We've talked about it yeah. at safety, have not having Houston Griffith back there, KJ Wallace not getting that extra spring of work, Cam Hart especially not getting that spring of work. I would be curious to see what Ramon Henderson could have done with a full spring under his belt because he's such a, a raw athlete 
the athleticism is there, the length is there, and but you know now you get all that. You get Ryan Barnes and Philip Riley on campus as early enrollees. Mm -hmm. So you know, to me, that's going to be so huge for Mike Mickens because now the players have more knowledge of him, more comfort level of him, yeah, more trust point. in him, and now he has more of a knowledge of them. What makes this guy tick? What makes that guy tick? Uh, what this guy can do, what this guy can't do. Right. And now you bring in a scheme that is going to fit what he likes, which is more press, more man, those kind of things. Look, the Notre Dame coaching staff had to do a lot of protecting the secondary or the corners this past year. They had to protect them a lot. I've talked to, yeah. you know, ACC coaches that would say that, like they did a great job protecting the corners. And part of that is on Mike Mickens because you got to find what they're good at. And sure. make sure that they do that at a very high level. And they did that. And then him and Clark Lee were able to come up with ways to protect them so they weren't left on too many islands. Well, I'm I'm very interested to see what happens this year with Marcus Freeman's defense because now I, I realize it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. It's not he's not going to do exactly what he did at Cincinnati, but his corners did a lot of man-to-man, -man, a oh, yeah. lot of press coverage, and a lot of guys on islands. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not saying these guys can't do it. But that puts a little bit of extra pressure on Mike Mickens, right? Hundred percent, absolutely. I mean, yeah. you got to get those guys ready to play. You got to find who can play. You got to coach them up and get them ready to play. And that's what I'm. That's what I'm looking forward to seeing. Yeah, uh, come out of the spring is how quickly are, are you able to get Cam Hart going? Yeah, you know, or are you able to get Ramon Henderson going? Can you help Clarence Lewis take that next step? What can you do with Ryan Barnes? I'm going to talk about Ryan Barnes here in a little bit. Um, actually, you know what? Let's do it now. Oh. Let's do it now. Okay. So when you look at the 2021 recruiting class, okay. I think it's a very it's an underrated class in some areas because there's players that I think were were not respected enough from a recruiting standpoint. And, and and Ryan Barnes to me is at the very top of that list. When you think of when you think of what you want in a cornerback position or how you evaluate cornerbacks, you know, there's as a high school player, there's yeah. There's the first thing that people look at. People are obsessed with recruiting rankings. What was his ranking? Well, Ryan Barnes was a three-star recruit, right? right? Not going to really blow anybody away. Not a guy you're going to look at and say, oh, geez, look at, the, look at those rankings. You know, he's a great player. And then the other way to look at it, and this is from people who don't aren't like necessarily film breakdown people, the other way to look at it is, you know, what was his offer list? Well, here's who, here's who Ryan Barnes was offered by last year. Obviously, Notre Dame, Clemson, Florida. This is a kid in Maryland. Florida State, Georgia, LSU, Michigan, Oklahoma, Oregon, and USC are among his – and Penn State are among his right. many, many offers. So you got to ask yourself, why the disconnect? What's the, what's the disconnect here? Well, one kid didn't go to a lot of camps, didn't do a lot of those – tournaments and things like that and that's going to impact his ranking yeah you know clemson was making a push for ryan barnes clemson doesn't go after average corners right i mean they're going after the best of the best sure because they can yeah this to he to me was the biggest sleeper in this class for notre dame and he is the kid to me that could if he's as good as i think he is and as good as some of the people i've talked to at notre dame think he is this is a kid that people are going to view as the steal of the of the class and, and biggest sleeper in the class. And and you look at a guy that rivals ranked as the 60th best cornerback in the country, the 19th best player in the state of Maryland. And I just kind of chuckle at those, you know, and, and I say, boy, I have a feeling this kid is going to is going to boom because as good as Clarence Lewis was, with all due respect, Ryan Barnes is a much better high school football player and didn't get a chance to prove it as a senior because Maryland didn't allow a fall season. Gotcha. Now he's an early enrollee, something I don't believe Clarence Lewis had the had the obviously he even if he was on campus last spring, he wouldn't have had that opportunity because they didn't have a spring outside of one practice. The fact that Ryan Barnes gets that opportunity now, I think is going to be a huge boost for him. And here's the other part of this. Mike Mickens has has done a phenomenal job in the past with guys exactly like Clarence. Uh, exactly like Ryan Barnes, and we saw it with Clarence Lewis this year. Clarence Lewis is a is six foot tall, but he's a long six feet bench. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go back to Bowling Green in 2014. He had a true freshman named Nick Johnson that he developed to, to an All Mac player as a true freshman. Then in 2019, 
he gets Ahmed Gardner, who's a three-star kid from, from I think, the Detroit area that didn't have a Michigan offer, didn't have those big offers, goes to Cincinnati, and he's a true fresh – he's a he's a freshman All-American as a true freshman, another 6'2 kid, long arms, not the fastest guy in the world, but Mike Mickens was able to coach him up quickly and get him ready to play. You look at what he did with Nick McLeod last year. Nick McLeod, 6'1", long arms, not a great athlete. And and he was able to turn him into a an all ACC caliber corner. I think he was honorable mention all ACC player last year, in a year where there's a lot of good corners in the ACC. And then you look at what he did with Clarence Lewis. And now you take a guy like Ryan Barnes that to me athletically is better than all those guys, you know. And and he's six two and he's smooth and he's fluid. Uh, you watch his coverage skills. He's got natural ball skills. He's got great feet. He's this kind of kid where you look at and you're saying, I can't figure out what they're not seeing that I'm seeing or vice versa. Yeah. You know, and sometimes that just happens where you watch a kid and you're like, what are they missing? And, and sometimes, you know, you get it wrong and, and those people were right. And sometimes you, you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm feel confident on this one. I'm as confident as I could be that Ryan Barnes is going to far outplay his recruiting rankings. And the fact that there's a need at the position right now, the fact that he's an early enrollee, the fact yep. that it's a new secondary co- or a new defensive coach, and and Mike Mickens hasn't exactly been at Notre Dame long enough to have like this three year bond with this one kid he wants to you know play because he loves the kid and all that. So it's going to be the best guys are going to play. Sure, sure. I'm really curious to see what kind of move and push Ryan Barnes can make this spring. Now he's going to have to mentally do it. He's going to have to be focused and locked in, and he's going to have to sure. you know be mature and go to class and go to workouts and do all those kind of things and buy in. But if he does all that. And I'm not saying he won't. I don't know. I mean, yeah, everything right. I've heard about Brian Barnes, he's a he's a great kid. I'm just saying, like, that's part of for any freshman. Yeah, that's right. part of it. I have a feeling he could end up by the end of next year. I will not be shocked if by the as as we're heading into the 2021 season, we're all talking about how Ryan Barnes is their best corner. I won't be shocked at all. He to me, he is that good. And that's why I think he is a sleeper. But the biggest thing is, Vince, he is the he is like the epitome of what Mike Mickens has looked for and thrived with at corner. I mean, that's what you look for. Like, what does this guy do a good job? Some some coaches are better with, like, big backs. Some like scat backs. Some like, you know, this type of player. When you just look at Mike Mickens' track record, right? this is exactly the kind of kid he's had tremendous success with in the past. And I just think that Ryan Barnes also has the talent to where he's, to me, the biggest sleeper in this class. So if you were to ask me who who of the – non highly ranked kids would is is the biggest sleeper in the class you know ryan barnes is my overall class pick and he's certainly my pick on defense is a guy that is we're going to look back and and look at his consensus ranking and say yeah they missed on that one they missed on that one pretty big and so yeah that's the so i think now's a good time to talk about that as we're talking about mike mickens because i think part of that success is you got to go to a school that has a coach that knows how to use your specific skill set. Absolutely. That's the most key thing. If I have a son who's getting recruited and, you know, after I've talked to a bunch of coaches, I've done a bunch of research or whatever, I want my kid to go to a place that he's going to flourish with that coach. That that's got to be one of the one of the one of the top things. Uh because look, school's important, obviously the education's important, but when we're talking about just football alone, I want a kid who's going to I want a coach who's going to develop my kid and you have to have a proven track record of it right but here, here's a great example so i remember when mm-hmm. alizé mack was getting recruited at the time he was alizé jones and right he talked about one of the reasons he committed to notre dame and, and didn't go to ucla which is where he was committed to at the time yep. and he said yep. basically it came down to this i went to notre dame and they showed me a bunch of film of how they use their tight ends and how i fit into their their system i went to ucla and they had to go on a chalkboard and talk about how they're going to use me because they'd never really had anyone do what i do and at the end of the day, that's kind of what it. they know how to use me. They've proven they yeah. know how to use me. This staff doesn't. And so Makes I think sense. that's a big part of it is going. And that's why, you know, so well, why do these DBs keep going to Ohio State? Because Ohio State has proven. Yes. That they can turn talented defensive backs into the high first NFL round draft picks. picks yeah, right? exactly. And so it's that proven success at my position. Right. You know, no, no offensive lineman is going to pick Ohio State because. Kerry Coombs does a great job developing DBs, right? It's because, you know, 
this coach can do that. Notre Dame gets a gets great offensive linemen year after year, not because Mike Elson's a good defensive line coach or because they produce you know receivers. It's because of what they produce at that position. Sure, absolutely. And so you develop that kind of track record of hey, this school really knows how to use this type of player well. And right. I think that's what Mike Mickens has done, and that's going to impact Ryan Barnes. And it's why I think, you know, when when Mike Mickens first got hired, that's why he was one of the first guys that they targeted. And they said, we got to get that guy. And and I think the extra part of it for Notre Dame fans is this is a kid who kind of grew up as a Notre Dame fan, too. I mean, his dad was a Notre Dame fan. He sent me a picture early in his recruitment of him on campus several years ago when he was visiting with his dad and his brother just because you know they just wanted to be on campus because his dad's kind of Notre Dame fan. So I think that adds to the storyline, but that yeah. has nothing to do with why I think he's going to yeah. be a heck of a player. It just makes for a cooler story. You know, right, absolutely. You mean if he's not going to be a better is, player because he came to Notre Dame one yeah, day? He's got that what? shamrock. You know, he's Gosh. got that extra leprechaun. Uh, I should you be know, an NFL in, in player. Him. Yeah. So, <laughs> but he he's a guy that to me, Vince, at the end of the day, I have a feeling is going to be is going to be one of the biggest steals of this entire entire co- in the country, one of the biggest sleepers in the entire country, and certainly, certainly the best sleeper in uh, in the class for Notre Dame. 